Okay guys, welcome back to the series in which I give you my self-proclaimed expert opinion on how to level up fast in Battlefront 3. Oh wait, no, I'm not allowed to talk about that one just yet. I'm here to talk about the Enforcer class today, and the Aerial, and the Infiltrator. Yep, three subjects in one go. Hopefully my dollar store laptop can handle the editing. Things get a bit spooky with the process after 12 minutes of runtime, so if I go past that time, you might see some weird shit. The laptop was a gift from crack sensei Raphael Zaroff in downtown Detroit, so I wonder if I can even tell you guys that story. It's how I got my channel name and 49 stitches, but I simply do not have enough time for it in this video, so it'll have to wait. A lot of research went into this grind. There's so many types of reinforcements with different abilities combining with all sorts of maps and competing with all sorts of heroes. For the Infiltrator, I tested a bit of Ewok on Kessel and Endor to see how the whiskey pouches would fare at spawn points that Han and Leia excel at, and found that it was good, but a bit lacking in overall damage. I then tried the Arc Trooper, one of my OG favorite classes in the game, put him on high spawn maps where where he'd be most comfortable, defending choke points on Kamino and chilling on Genosis with god tier aim. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty fun, but it still left my mouth dry and thirsty for better XP. Then I tried the Sith Trooper. For the Enforcer, it was a process as well. The Death Trooper was pretty efficient. He can nearly get hero levels of XP on Jabba's if your teammates don't spawn in as well, Palpatine, Aiden, Vader, or Bosk. The Clone Commando can shred too, on maps like Felucia and parts of Kamino. But guys, the Flame Trooper. Ooh, mommy. And last but not least, the Aerial class. This took me about four days to weigh the options in my mind. It took the full force of my brain and left my tactical mindset fried to a crisp. Just kidding, I found some beast mode strats with the First Order Jet Trooper that will inflate your levels beyond belief. So what do all three of these classes have in common? Well, if you guess that they're all from the prequel trilogy, you have a fucking brain tumor, because they are, in fact, all from the sequel era. So, us being able to land high levels with all three of them in the same era unlocks a lot of doors. If you're someone who wants to max out all three of these classes in a timely manner, or trying to get their levels up to purple ASAP, this is the guide for you. Having them in the same era means we take the hassle of searching for a new map after the good one is done completely out of the equation. Being well-rounded with all three really plays into the map rotation in the First Order and makes the process so much smoother. So with the First Order map rotation, it goes from Maz's Castle to Starkiller Base to Agent Kloss, then to the MC-85. I'll be going over all four in this video and which classes are best suited for each. But before we dive shaft first into a pretty lengthy guide, let's set up the star cards. For the Enforcer, we're running Enforcer Training, Expert Weapons Handling, and Battle Hardened. On the Aerial, we're putting on Aerial Training, Battle Hardened, and Survivalist. Am I on shrooms, or are there two Battle Hardened Star Cards? Dice, I really can't do the same shtick twice, please. I don't want to rant about Star Card creativity again. That shit got me so mad the first time I had a toothache for a week straight. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a cavity. But I'm 90% sure that your toe-sucking scum-fucking drop of cockroach cum job on the cards was to blame. You're welcome for not suing. And for the infiltrators, we're rolling Desperation, Acquisition, and Stalker. This card setup, in my opinion, makes the Infiltrator, or Sith Trooper, one of, if not the best, reinforcement in the game. With Desperation, we reduce the cooldown of all of our abilities after being hurt. So the Sith Trooper feeds off of pain? Yes, Dice! That's how you do it! And with Stalker, we'll be getting health on kill for each enemy we blast. That's also being revealed by scanning abilities. As this guy will want to be using abilities whenever we get them. Staying in the thick of things, recharging abilities, stopping enemy regen, damage output, this class has everything we need to scoop up some XP. And on top of that, the rage in his voice gets me so damn fired up! More firepower! Arrogant scum! On target! Hit them again! Go! Die! Shoot them all! Alright, so Maz's castle. I'll run it through first with Enforcer, then Infiltrator. On Starkiller base, the prime focus will be the Aerial, but on Phase 4, we'll sprinkle a little bit of Sith Trooper and Flame Trooper. For Asian Claws, the Aerial will be the complete focus. And lastly, for the MC-85, I'll do separate run-throughs for both the Infiltrator and the Enforcer. How the hell am I gonna fit this into 12 minutes, man? We're already pissed deep into this video. Oh, God. Hopefully we make it to the finish line without any hard glitches in the editing software. Alright, on Maz's castle with the Flame Trooper, you want to be stationed at B. With the Flame Trooper, you need to get semi-close to the opponent before you can start torching them. So first, slap a grenade into their spawn, and wait for them to come closer. 
You can hide in this hut until they come close, then pop your middle ability and go to town. Should be a pretty easy and fast cap. But on phase 2, there's definitely going to be at least one enemy hero, so be cautious. The trench leading into A can have good close range payoff, but if there's a ray waiting for you, you're as good as dead. If you want more kills, be stationed around B and hold down this area. This is where both right spawns meet. For phase 3, head to B. This has much better close range combat than A, and has a cluster spawn that is practically made for the flame trooper. The enemy spawns in a clump just above this hill, but be careful to not reveal yourself too much. Let them come up in a bunch and use your overcharge ability to finish the job. Alright, phase 4 isn't too big of a deal for us. That is, if the enemy team is lacking a fin. If they do have one, you'll need to draw him out as best as you can, because with his middle ability, troopers will eat your entire clip without blinking. Once he's down, you can move in. The resistance spawns pretty quick on this phase, so keep close to the door. As the flame trooper, you can lock down this objective with ease. If you speedrun this map or you have a emoting Palpatine, you should be getting around 50,000 XP. But if you chew on this phase, that number shoots up to upper 60s. That's pretty nice. The XP per level cap for reinforcements is 21,000, not 25,000 like it is for heroes. So if we're talking long-term grinds, it's looking pretty nice so far. But believe me, it gets way better for this guy. As the infiltrator on Maz's castle, you want to be wherever the enemy is. Sticking to A to get a good grenade placement at this spawn is pretty good though. If you balance getting intentionally hurt with this trooper and getting health on kill using your middle ability, you can be an absolute juggernaut with damage output on par with the flame trooper. On phase 2, you want to stick around B's perimeter and gradually push in. Lots of grenades are nice here, but don't make too much of a pain gamble, because you only have so much health. While defending B, you need to watch enemies coming from all sorts of directions, and it's best to fight at mid-distance, getting hurt and chucking detonators like your life depends on it. For phase 3, head to A. Just like with the last phase, a gradual push is effective here. Starting from the left side, then working your way to the right. Once it's clean, get the high ground and watch these hills and the spawns to the left and right. You'll have a lot of directions to manage, so if need be, fall back. This phase is pretty much just a push and pull, and as long as your eyes are darting around for enemies, it's a simple time. Okay, for phase 4, this guy has a luxury that other heroes and classes in sequel co-op do not. With his grenade, he pauses enemy regen, so even if there is a fin giving health buff, we don't have to worry about it. All we need to do is focus on getting as many grenades into the objective as possible. Sacrifice your health when you can and make sure to have your middle ability up when pushing, so you can siphon the health back into your body with each kill. When this objective is locked down, Cover this spawn with a grenade and then watch to the right of you, because they can come from unpredictable waves. You only have 350 health, so the health sacrifice tactic is a bit limited in these kinds of close quarters. But after you win, you should be looking at the same XP payoff the Flame Trooper has, if not better. This is a really underrated map for these guys, but the next couple of maps only get better. But first, let's cover the aerial on Starkiller Base. You need the Jet Trooper ASAP, because the resistance is pretty ruthless when it comes to jumping on objectives in this phase. So, first take the assault and sprint through here. Then, throw your grenade right here as you pass this structure to your left, at this angle. Respawn as the Jet Trooper and immediately get the enemy off the objectives. But our main payoff, where we want to be the most, is at this spawn next to A. When a wave comes in, float up high and get three explosive shots in.
once their squad is down, look left and fire at the troopers by objective B. If you've never played this class before, don't worry. Your aim doesn't have to be on point. These blaster bolts lock 40% onto the opponent, so you just need to fire in their general direction. And that is the death cycle for the Jet Trooper on Starkiller. If you're in prime farming condition, you should be snagging 25 to 30,000 XP after 5 minutes. But if the resistance pushes you past this phase, have no worries. If you want some levels on your Enforcer or Infiltrator, let the enemy push and push until phase 4. These classes absolutely excel on this phase, and if you let the resistance cap the previous two fast, you'll have a lot of time here. I'll start with the Flame Trooper. Most enemies spawn down this hallway, so make sure to have your grenade at the ready for when they cluster up. Once you toss it, you can either push up while overcharged, or hang to the left of the doorway and wait for them to come through. And for the Sith Trooper, it is the same piece of the puzzle, but you'll want to remain at mid-distance and dip into being hurt every so often to recharge abilities. They might be spilling out a bit more, but that's okay. If things get too intense, you can hop up here and gradually push your way down. You have the toolkit and the damage output to solo defend this. You just need to be smart with your health, that's all. If you couldn't tell already, I love this class. So on this map, if you aren't able to snag big aerial levels, hang back until phase four and you'll get some really good levels. With the class of your choice, that is. Now for Asian Gloss, we'll be running the aerial for the whole duration. We're jumping into a high risk, high reward objective on phase one with objective B. You don't have a lot of health, so make sure to keep your distance. It can be hard to see enemies on this map, so a high view is super useful. Once things are clear, hunt down anybody fleeing up this hill. On phase two, we'll get busy with A. Lots of guys here, so probe from a distance with both modes of fire. I like to shoot three explosive shots, then five ticks of a blaster bolt, then back to explosive. This seems to work more efficiently than just waiting to cool down your explosive mode. While you're waiting for your pack to recharge, you can hang here and fire at an angle. But the bird's eye view is obviously a lot more efficient. If you're planted here all alone, get ready to seal this side. After this, there's a plethora of guys zooming down the middle. On capture, there will be a ton of guys fleeing, so shoot up and fall in. On phase three, head to A and stick to the left side of the ship. Here we get some wiggle room, an angle on a few spawns, and a good view of the other side as well. Now the final phase is where the jet trooper will put his V card in the shredder. The whole enemy team is here, and with the aerial it's gonna be difficult to get in close. If only there was an angle that would give us cover and a way to cheese the entire team. Just keep doing this until the clock reaches zero. You should be snagging a good 60 to 70,000 XP with the aerial after 10 minutes. For a reinforcement, especially the aerial, my god, those are good numbers. Also, this class is just fun as hell. Now, for our final map, the MC-85 Star Cruiser. Let's start with the Sith Trooper. No specific objective on phase one, just attack to your heart's content. There will be some clustered on all objectives, so you can really just take your pick. Since there are no heroes here, you can be pretty carefree. On phase two, you want to toss as many grenades down this hall as you can. Only push up when the numbers are thin, because every single enemy is on this objective. When it's done, a wave can come down this hallway, but spawns in this phase are glitched pretty often, so don't worry about it. On phase three, let's go to B. A bit close quarters here, so we'll need to keep mid distance by coming up here to the right and drilling into the objective with detonators and blaster fire. Push in while the numbers are low, and as your teammates get on the objective, your next move is to crusade around the map looking for victims.
using the scanner ability is really useful in picking gunfights here and will save your life quite often. Now with the final phase it's best to let the enemy collect on the objective and stand about here, throwing grenades, pushing up a little to lose some health, then throwing another grenade seconds later. That is the gist of this area. Don't charge in too close, and make sure to keep an eye on your health. If your teammates are sucking Moose Knuckle, you're going to be at this phase for a while, and that's a good thing, because this is the best XP outlet for the Infiltrator. You can toss grenades to your heart's content, and there's not much that can stop you. The occasional ray, or the charging cow, but after that, this phase is cake. 60 to upper 70s is the number after 10 minutes. As the Enforcer on the MC-85 will be defending B with their lives, as a big hulk of damage you'll be able to cap this pretty easy, fending off spawn with a grenade placed here, and overcharging anybody who comes to sniff the objective. Phase 2. Grenade in when you can and slowly push in. Hug left wall and casually introduce yourself. This hallway can be murked with one throw, and the spawns to the left and right can be handled with ease. For phase 3, we're booling to A. Maybe some heroes here, but if not, it's a simple wipe. Now here's where things get weird. When the enemy spawns, wait a bit until they pop into this doorway, then throw your incendiary grenade. After that, flick your middle ability and then charge in. And just repeat this until we get to the glorious fourth phase. Similar to the infiltrator, we'll need to be throwing into this objective whenever we can, but we'll need to get a bit closer. We're not able to pause a fin buff, so it may prove a bit difficult here. You can flame from this position of cover and slide in close from here. If you think you're going to cap the objective, you can meet the enemy team out of bounds and spray to your heart's content. And that is the reinforcement guide. If you wanted to blast the absolute goddamn hell out of these strats, it would take about 56 hours of total game time. That's a big grind, yes, but if you stick to this and you casually go at it for a while, you can have those max logos in no time. I deeply hope the video and these tips proves effective for your top to the climb. Next time, it's Finn. And the next time after that, it's Phasma. And then after that, what's gonna happen? Who knows? I got a plan, don't worry. All right, stay safe out there, guys. Good night.